50 wins as a coach in the NCAA tournament, and they are working on 26 straight wins in the Eastern Regional, which is unbelievable. It's amazing. They've, the last six times they've been sent to the East, they've advanced to the Final Four, going for seven this weekend here in Syracuse. Duke and White as first possession. Now you have Dupe down on James. Big advantage for James size-wise, and he has been an excellent rebounder in the NCAA tournament so far. Carowell dribbles over, frees himself, and gets the bounce. Duke showing just enough pressure. And we saw Williams last week against Heinrich of Kansas have all kinds of problems defensively. Offensively, too, Billy, last week he struggled. Miller swatted away by Battier, fresh off a career-high eight blocks in the win against Kansas. Came all the way from the weak side to do that. Williams back of the rim, Battier keeps it alive. As Coach K said last week, he's everywhere, Battier. Well, this Duke team has never played in a dome. And shooting perspective will be interesting early on because they do count on perimeter shooting a great deal so far. Nothing hitting from the outside. Williams with a miss. James with a misfire also on this possession. Lazy pass by Williams. Battier had it stripped away by Wright. Excellent steal on the way up. Dupe wants to challenge. Goes inside. Aslam with Florida's first points. Beautiful bounce pass by Dupe on the inside. And here comes the pressure. There'll be a double team on the side. Look at Battier, he's gonna help bring it up. Being a tall man to control over the top of the press. Nice move by Duke University here. Instead of trying to beat it with a dribble. Williams turns it over. He did that, in fact, eight times against the Jayhawks. To the corner, Hamilton snags it. Haslam cutting to the basket, kicks it out. Wright steps in, nope. Look at this passing by Florida. Dupe with the left hand, and James is fouled by Haslam. James has been, as I said, an excellent rebounder in this game. Now, you can see what Duke is doing against the press. Williams got careless. Against this Florida team, you cannot get careless with the dribble. I like Duke's setup here. Battier throwing over the top of the pressure. Right back to Battier. Keep the ball off the floor. And a reach-in call on Hamilton. Justin Hamilton, a freshman for Florida. Freshman on freshman. Jim, point out one other thing. Florida can press like this because they're an extremely deep team. They don't worry about foul trouble, particularly a guy like Hamilton. Comes into the game to distribute the ball and put as much pressure on the primary dribbler as possible. Gators will go with about 10 players. In fact, 10 players average over 10 minutes a game. So interchangeable parts and a steal forced by Haslam. Another turnover by Duke. They had 23 turnovers in the Kansas game, a season high for them. And they're not being very good with the ball so far in this game. Turned it over the last three trips this time. A wild shot by Williams. And out of there comes Mike Miller, all SEC performer. Game winner against Butler in the first round at the buzzer. Toupe coming off the screen set by Wright. Jim, one of the things we also have to take in consideration with Florida being a much deeper team, they don't have to worry about foul trouble, but Duke so far in the tournament have made 47 of 58 free throws, the opponents only 12 of 21. These, the two officials out here that I have not seen in an NCAA tournament, it'll be interesting to see how this game is called. Dupe hits from the outside, he's not afraid of that dome. Remember where Florida played their SEC tournament. The Georgia Dome, that was a triple by Dupe. Inside, Carowell, and they count the basket. Dupe not able to get there in time. He gives up a lot of size, and when he gets caught inside, Duke has uh, got a big advantage. Good passing inside, over the top. Boozer hits, and you can see without question, Dupe never got there with his feet planted in the defensive position. Carowell, very good finisher in tight. In the Kansas game, as Carowell does so often, he hit the big free throws down the wire. Duke showing a little press of their own. Carowell has all five Duke points. The pay open on the side. Williams read it and comes up with the theft. Miller really telegraphed that pass, Jim. You could really see it coming. Good job by Jason Williams. Carowell. 
Over right, ball free, and Boozer has it taken away by Miller. He tried to make the shot before he caught the ball. Over the top, Haslam can't reach for it. Billy, I said it should be a high speed game because we have two of the four highest scoring teams in Division I basketball this season. Well, Duke led the nation in scoring last year. They did it again this year. Now, it's kind of surprising. Duke does like to push the ball, but against the Florida team, expect Mike Yusefsky to kind of have that, that running game under control. Illinois had a hard time pulling back in the course of the game that they lost to uh, this Florida club. You saw Donnell Harvey come in. Donnell Harvey, number four. Williams with a three. He's been long on his two jumpers. Harvey, a tremendous rebounder. He'll be quite a challenge inside for Duke. Battier on him, and there he goes. Boy, he was able to bounce free for position and scores on his first trip. Extremely quick player on the inside. He was too strong for Battier on that occasion. James drives and banks it home. Nate James having a tremendous NCAA tournament. But Hamilton almost loses it. Back with it. There's the switching by Duke. Miller would like to have his dribble alive to try to take Battier off the dribble. Try it again. This time he traveled. Back at Syracuse, Bonnie Bernstein will be reporting from the sidelines, if you will, tonight. Bonnie? Hi, Jim. You know, everybody's been talking about Florida's daunting press, but before the game, Mike Krzyzewski pointed out a little loophole. He said Florida tends to trap a lot. Inevitably, that's going to leave one of my guys open. If my players can find the open man quickly, think smart on the run, we'll be able to break the press. As far as Billy Donovan's Gators, he said, I want my team to approach this game the same way Duke is. I want my guys to think we're going to the Final Four, and Duke's standing in all way. Jim. Inside they break the pressure and it ends up being a dump for Boozer. And there's a case where Bonner got caught with Williams. Bonner does not have the leg speed to create the double team trap. Williams just beat it down the floor. Hamilton wildly and Battier sweeps it away. Matt Bonner you spoke of checking in out of that timeout. Number 15 a freshman for Florida. Battier over him with a three a try. So far Jim Duke has been long on every jump shot from three. There's one finally hits. That's not bothering Carowell. He has eight points early for Duke. For those of you expecting Tulsa and Miami, we'll be getting into the start of that game shortly. Miller getting a screen here from Bonner. He's got a smaller man on him. Good switch by Battier. Inside Bonner, right over the top of Boozer. Breakdown by Boozer defensively. And here you see again, Battier able to throw over the top of the press with his great size. You can't overplay enough what it's like for a team to play in a dome for the first time until they get their bearings with their outside shot. Depth of perception is often a problem. Carowell loves the post-up move. Boozer hacked on the way up. Probably a pretty good foul by Dupay. Of course, when you talk about this Duke team, no experience playing in the Dome. Carowell, Battier, both with a lot of experience in CAA tournament experience playing in Dome. Not necessarily good. St. Petersburg, do you remember that? Kentucky, their last game of their freshman year. And then, of course, against Connecticut last year. Now, Jim, these two teams did face each other last year. Speaking of that, Duke winning a game 116 to 86. And in that game, William Avery. Uh, eight for ten out of three uh, from the three-point line, and they just buried uh, a very, very young team, Florida, uh, on that occasion. These two tangled back in the 1994 national semifinals in Charlotte, and Duke was down seven in that game before coming back to win 70 to 65 behind Grant Hills 25. Went on to lose to Arkansas in the final. Christensen has come into the tournament uh, for the first time. Matt Christensen. Number 41 for Duke. Entry pass. Oh, last touch by Florida. And Harvey got Don Levy right in the right in the eye. He's got a feel that he's snake bit a little bit. He just gets into the ball game and takes a hand to the eye. Yep. There he is, Mike Dunleavy. Pretty good ball handler. Oh, oh. Battier called with the illegal screen. Battier, a smart play on his part, figuring that. Dunleavy may have problems with the dribble, tried to set the screen to open him up, but doesn't get there in time. 
Here you see him setting the screen, never plants his feet. And you can see Weeks in the game now, Bonner in the game, Nelson in the game, Parker in the game. Only one original starter on the floor right now for Florida. But Billy Donovan has a lot of confidence in this rotation system. Florida with already 10 players in the game. Seeing action. Nelson with a three, and the freshman who was on fire last week hits his first shot. Jim, in only 19 minutes, he had 16 points, four assists, four of six threes against Illinois. A terrific performance by the uh, young man from West Virginia. Interesting seeing Matt Christensen in the game. It's his first NCAA tournament action since 1996. Williams penetrates. Bonner, good recovery. He was beaten off the dribble. Nelson goes behind the back to get free. He'll try another one. and delivers again a triple. You've got to pick him up. Man had nine 40-point games in high school. Not afraid to put it up at all. And there's a bad place to be with that dribble. Nelson reaches in, ties it up. Gator ball. Well, you can see Dunleavy is going to have to put the ball off the floor, throw over the top of the press. He's taking himself right into the trap areas. Arrow belongs to Florida. Here we can see the trap area right here. The Florida would love to have you play there all day long. He picks up his dribble, no place to go. Now, Carrollwell, as usual, assigned to the toughest guy, trying to slow Nelson down a little bit. Nate James has come back in for Duke. Leaks a very good score. To the corner, another three, and three in a row. That was Major Parker. How about this bench, Jim? Great confidence. And there again, a bad trapping area for Duke. Two seconds to get it across. They not don't in make time. It. Not in time. And second violation. What Duke is doing is what you cannot do against this trapping defense, and that is try to beat it with the dribble. They need to go over the top of the press with the pass. Wasting a lot of time. That ball was tipped. James comes and doesn't get across. Great rally by the uh, bench of Florida. How about three? How about another one? That's a two. They count that back. as a two for three Nelson. shots, three makes. Jim Nance and Billy Packer along with Bonnie Bernstein at the East Regional in Syracuse. In the data bank, Florida, a number five seed in the East. Well, no five has ever reached the championship game. But Florida with its bench, 15 points already produced by that bench, six out of six from the field by the subs. Now let's see if Duke decides to attack a different way. If you put the ball on the floor, you've got to keep the dribble alive, as Williams does here. He got it across with two seconds to spare. Nate James he from the corner. The Battier, he got position inside away from Parker. Duke still, though, not delivering from the outside, Jim, against this press. That shot is going to be available. Good dish, good play by Boozer. Boozer reached around and batted away the pass. Dunleavy. He'll shoot two. Dunleavy in that situation, Jim, where he is so big normally for the guy guarding him, loves to take it to the hole. It looks slow, but he is so effective with that dribble. Matt Bonner committing the foul and for the fastest coverage online and a complete look at the starting lineups of the remaining tournament teams, click on March Mayhem at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online, the keyword CBS Sportsline. Dunleavy, Jim, obviously missed the four games with mononucleosis, came back in the ACC tournament, played 20 minutes his first game back against Clemson, four for four, three, 16 points, four rebounds. Followed that up with a 15 and four point game, but did not play well in Winston-Salem. When you look at Duke, they have a lot of guys that play 40 minutes and in some cases, 45 minute games. They've got actually four guys that play over 28 minutes a game. So two entirely different uh, makeups of the ball clubs. Miller would like to turn that corner and drive to the basket. There he goes. Puts it up high off the back of the rim. And Williams sneaks down to secure the rebound. 
but a good rebounder is Williams. James, again, corner shot. He loves working on the corners. Nate James continues his outstanding play. Had 12 points against Kansas, 18 points against Lamar. Sneaky player, isn't he? Miller on the dunk, matching now the Nate James jumper at the other end. Dunleavy turned his back. Good pass. Dunleavy couldn't finish it. Got the pass from Boozer. Nelson again, a pull up three. And you can see how important it is for Florida to make those shots so they can get their press established. Good job by Wright stopping Williams' drive. Williams again off, and the rebound by Wright. Williams is 0 for 5 from the field. Nelson at the other end. Haslam will go to the line for a three-point play. And there's where the freshness of Haslam and, Haslam and Wright beat Duke's legs to the basket. Ball goes up. Just quicker feet from rested players doing a good job off the glass. It's called on Boozer. So far, Jim, that uh, huge difference that Duke normally has against their opponents from the free throw line not uh, being part of this game. Florida does a pretty good job themselves in terms of going to the line. And both teams shoot extremely well. Both shoot over 70% as a team. Should be able to go by. He did. He drove right past Haslam and got hammered at the other end by Weeks. Now that's a bad matchup. Haslam can't play outside against Battier, who's a total basketball player. With the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the Chevrolet most viable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed over $8 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Two for Battier. You know, after that game against Kansas last week, he uh, had eight blocks, 21 points. Roy Williams said about Battier, maybe the most alert, most aware defensive player that I can ever remember in college basketball. Well, that's pretty strong. You know, he was an assistant coach at North Carolina, had guys like Sam Perkins, Michael Jordan, some pretty good defenders. Oh, nice ball. Oh, yeah, that was right over the top of Battier. They bent the pass to the inside to Haslam. Haslam posting up in that paint. Another bad place to pick up your dribble. Battier snaps it over quickly. Williams at last. It's a three after missing his first five. Weeks off and running. Here comes Nelson again. You've got to stop his dribble. Haslam suddenly he reached in to knock it out. You'll see down in the low post, watch how Haslam takes the control of that paint. He's got Battier right on his back. Does an excellent job not breaking to the ball until the ball is released. See, if he goes early as the ball is coming to him, the space is not there for him to make that catch. Very good technique. Weeks goes down the lane. And knocked out by Carowell. Duke University turning some heads here on this out-of-bounds play and almost with Got burned on that one. Miller, front of the rim, right, go inside, had the easy position, boxed out Carowell. Pretty good size in there with Wright and Harvey, excellent rebounders, Battier on the bench, so Duke a lot smaller. James, that's a two. Well, it was yeah, it's a foul, foul on, foul on Dun Dunleavy. Dunleavy fouling over Nelson. Dunleavy struggled last really week at Winston-Salem. And uh, I was talking to him last Saturday between the games. And he said, you know, it's just it's a different feeling being in the NCAA tournament. He said he was nervous. And, uh, you know, who wouldn't be? But he said it was a totally different kind of anxiety than what he had experienced in all those big games playing in the ACC. Jim, in fairness to the young man, Mononucleosis out for four games, came back off the cookie. There's a palming violation in the open court. You don't see that called very often, but I don't think he's got his full strength or quickness back uh, at all. 
and uh, maybe he's having some after effects of sitting down during that period of time. Obviously, it didn't work out. So the palming call, one that you think should be stepped up a little more often. Well, and it's scrutinized. Well, definitely, if you're gaining an advantage with the palm, I didn't think there was any advantage gain on that play. So you very seldom see it called. Parallel. Looking for room, a reach in, steal by the Gators. Miller breaks up over the top. Miller, no. That's, that is a legal block. Yeah, because the ball was on the way up. Dunleavy blocked it after it hit the backboard off Carrollwell. Florida ball. Now, there was a case where Williams could not get the proper angle for that bounce pass. You like to be at a 45. He was almost perpendicular. Impossible ball to catch. Why don't you explain that off the glass block move by Dunleavy? Yeah. Why it's legal in you, college basketball? Right. As long as the ball's on the way up, you can pin it on the glass. Harvey wants it over the top. There he gets Boozer again. Oh, they're going to say a push off. A push off on Boozer. Well, I don't know if it's Boozer Boos or going the other way. It's going the other way. Okay, it's going on. Well, we, let's on see. Harvey. Yep. Oh, no. Is it? Yes, it is on Boozer. Bench points in this game, 15 for Florida. Two Mike Dunleavy free throws for Duke. Florida in its two wins, Billy, in Winston-Salem. Wins over Butler in Illinois. Averaged 35 points in the two games off the bench. Off the bench, yeah. That's Boozer's second foul on the inside. Let's see if Florida goes inside again. He's going to be matched up with Harvey. Harvey very strong in the paint. There he is. Hamilton should have stayed on that side of the floor. Outside jumper, doesn't drop for right, and Carrollwell surveys, he'll bring it up. Critical seven minutes for Duke here to keep Boozer from getting that third five. Right Another steal by away. Wright. He just reached right in. Turned the ball over, got away with it, the official didn't see it. Hamilton, off the glass, went up high with it. Up and over Boozer. Isn't it amazing how this bench produces? Guys come in and they do the job defensively. They're not in awe of getting into the basketball game because it's standard procedure for Florida. They have a lot of confidence what they can do. Carrollwell, That's pull up. Shot. Yep. He's having a big night. Carrollwell loves that shot from 12 feet. And here's Florida right back on the attack. I think Florida ought to at least take one shot to get that ball down inside with Harvey on and, and Buzirani. Nine different players have scored for the Gators in this game. Three seconds. Pretty interesting to watch how these referees are patrolling the lane. Florida really setting up in the paint. Here we see Hamilton coming in. He's got good size, excellent delivery on the layup. He had 10 against Mississippi in the SEC tournament. They can explode from almost any player. Carroll goes middle. James between two defenders banks it home. He's got six. Nate James continues to impress. The kind of guy in his scouting report, you look at him as maybe the fifth guy on his team, but he is coming up big. This is a good move right here by Florida Hill. Oh, yeah, Harvey lost uh, his footing. Yep. And that deflected by Hamilton. But a good play by Williams because Harvey was on the floor on the other end. Boozer hustled down court, and if Hamilton doesn't get a piece of that, it's an easy two. Bonner returns, freshman from New Hampshire. They brought a busload of people over from Concord, New Hampshire to support him here tonight. On the road to the Final Four. Williams. No call on that. Williams gets an offensive tap. Thought he might have been fouled on the yeah, first I thought shot. he was. Dupe and looks around, feels the presence of a Duke defender. Miller. Look at James. James goes in and it actually snatches it away from Boozer. Mike Krzyzewski, you can see, wanting to play this game a little bit more half court at a time. So unless they have the break there, an attacking break, he'd like to use some clock. Florida star player Miller is only one of seven in this game, but the Gators lead by three. And he got a piece of Battier on the elbow. Well, the regional finals are set for tomorrow. Auburn Hills, Michigan State, Iowa State, one against two. In the West, Big Ten. We'll have a Big Ten team at the Final Four. We know that. Wisconsin and Purdue. They won in the quarterfinals three weeks ago, right? Yeah, just two weeks ago.
Big Ten tournament in Chicago. Wisconsin two to one advantage against Purdue so far this year. Dunley the end for James. What do you think of that matchup tomorrow, Wisconsin Purdue? How do you well, say I would say this, as opposed to let's say an LSU that had never played against a Wisconsin type team and, and probably had a hard time realizing what they were in for. Purdue certainly would be used to the way Dick Bennett would like to have a game played. Purdue will attempt to become the first home state Final Four team since Duke in 94 when the Final Four was in Charlotte. In fact, Duke was the only home state Final Four team in the entire decade of the 90s. Boy, Florida really putting guys down in the lane. Bonner with a three. Freshman can hit that shot, but way off the mark that time. Duke can take the lead here. Inside, Boozer. All good defense by Bonner. And Harvey, nope. Boozer picks up the loose ball. And he'll go to the line. Good free throw shooter. The freshman, 75%. But you got to finish in there, Jim. That's not good enough to go on the line when you're down in low with your power player. He needs to be shooting now just one shot after he'd made the two. Haslam coming back in the game. Boozer will be coming out right after this. Mike Krzyzewski going to try to make sure he doesn't pick up the third foul with five minutes to rain remaining in this half. And same goes for Harvey. He'll be coming out after collecting his second. Haslam comes back. Major Parker for Florida. Miller goes to the bench along with Harvey. We talk about Boozer with his inside power game. We talk about him being a good free throw shooter. But how about when he stepped out and made that interception on the pass that probably was the play of the day that sent uh, Kansas back home. Picked off of the pass in the last 30 seconds. The last minute. And Matt Christensen does indeed come in for him. I think that Florida missed an excellent opportunity. With seven minutes to go, they had Boozer with two fouls. They had their men Harvey and Aslam down in the low post, and they never were able to deliver the pass to put him in the precarious situation to pick up his third foul. Dupay mismatch. Manier's on him. Off the dribble, Dupay is going to pass. Bonner lays it up softly. Bonner's got a lot of size. A lot like Dunleavy in the fact that he can go inside or out. Nice fake. Dunleavy inside and it bounces off the back of the rim. He's missed two. Two Short layups. Range. Yep. Trying to duck underneath instead of taking it strong to the basket. Aslan fake, spins. He'll go back out with it. They've got Dupe. He loves that shot. Bonner. Good call yeah. by the officials, yeah. working together very nicely there. Off Bonner off. came off the over the back and got away with it. Here we have Battier again, the man that's taken the ball out of bounds. He kind of sets up everything for this team. You know, Jim, whether it's offensively or defensively. Uh, Williams oh. being careless with the ball. Off the leg of Bonner. He cannot afford to play that point guard position and be careless as Williams has been. Both in the Kansas game, oh. illegal screen. How about that pick? Jolted Williams, but they'll flag Bonner now with his second. You talk about Battier kind of setting up everything. Does it remind you at all of, say, Grant Hill's well, last year where he, times he would handle the ball or, uh, you know, bring it up? Oh. Jim, I think back at the game against LSU. Shaquille O'Neal, Christian Leitner, the rematch where Duke had beaten LSU so badly. Bobby Hurley was injured. Grant Hill went to the point. Mike Krzyzewski put him back there. That's the first time we really got a chance to see how versatile he was as a player. And I think that Mike is doing a lot of those things with Battier now. One and one for Williams. Short. Boy, Nelson has been the guy. Up ahead, Haslam. Well, I tell you, that's a couple of times now we've seen the Florida players sliding on the floor. I love the way Nelson is going to develop as this point guard. We talked about him being uh, the leading scorer in the history of West Virginia high school basketball. You know, he beat your old buddy Rod Hundley records, but uh, he's going to be some point guard. Boy, that's a very impressive performance by Iowa State. Major Parker, he's got Christensen on him. He could take him with the dribble. Nelson trying to get the high screen from right. And right.
right converts. Well, I, what Florida is doing is setting up in the low post right in the lane. Brent Wright with a short range basket gives Florida the four point lead. They are really giving Duke problems when they set up in the blue paint. Nice job by Parker to stay on the floor. Double team on batting. Oh, foul call. And Dupay takes it off the floor, and he's running. And a reach by Williams. Good job by Dupay, putting that ball so low to the floor on the crossover, Williams had to reach for it. His first. Coming up, Pennzoil at the half. Greg and Clark will get you caught up on the action for down in Austin. More updates coming from the South Regional that's coming up on Pennzoil at the half. Jim, big gamble by Duke here. Boozer comes back into the ball game. Remember, he's got those two fouls, and let's see if Florida goes down to Haslam. Florida doing a great job posting up their men right in the lane, and they're just overpowering Duke people. Dupe knocks down the big front end of a one and one. And Edward Dupe, the third, the all time high school scorer in the state of Florida. We'll get one more. He broke Chris Corciani's state record. Points by a high schooler. Two for Dupe. Here comes Weeks in. Dupe out. And that revolving door of Billy Donovan's really doing a great job with bench production. Williams gets away from Weeks. And he's off to the races. Boozer, no. They're going to call a charge. And there is a case. Remember the little reach in foul by Williams down here, the cheap one? Now he picks up the big one. Now he's in foul trouble. And Duke has nowhere to go with Williams out of the game. He left the ground, went up in the air. When you've got a break with a dribble like that, you have got to stop at the foul line. You get up in the air, you have no control. The defender has got all the advantages. That's two fouls on Williams in a matter of seconds. So Haslam will shoot the one and one. Tulsa just tearing up Miami early by 15. One more for Haslam. You know, Florida basketball began back in 1915, but the Gators never qualified for the NCAA tournament until 72 years later, 1987, and their first ever NCAA tournament game was right here in the Carrier Dome. 87. They defeated North Carolina State with uh, Vinny Del Negro and beat the Big Ten champion Purdue Boilermakers here to go to the Sweet 16. And their first trip to the NCAA. And then got beat by the team that normally plays here, Syracuse. Right. <laughs> Florida with its biggest lead. Lead of eight. Reach in foul by Wright, who has really done a fine job defensively. Three steals already in this ball game. One week from Tuesday, CBS presents an extraordinary television event, Falcone. Jason Gedrick stars as Falcone. Don't miss this compelling new drama one week from Tuesday, April 4th, on CBS. You know, in 87, Jim, to take that story a little further, you remember Syracuse beat North Carolina to get to the Final Four, and then they beat a team named Providence, starring Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan, who came out of the Southeast Regional as the most outstanding player in that regional to get his team to the Final Four. Yeah. Beat Georgetown. That, that Florida group uh, coached by Norm Sloan actually went to three straight uh, NCAA tournaments, 87, 88, and 89. And that was really a very productive period in Norm Sloan's second tenure as a coach at the University of Florida. Right shot, and bounces out. James is the only man underneath. Williams is going to have to get a better understanding of his role in this game. Boozer pinned bet between two defenders and touched by Wright. Shot clock down to uh, 19 seconds. Wright has been everywhere. And of course, as I said again, this bench keeps all of those guys that are on the floor very fresh. Duke doing a pretty good job, though, controlling tempo in this game. They just are making bad decisions. Florida playing zone for the first time. Look for James in the corner. How about Williams from there, too? And off the back, Miller takes it. Leaks a great shooter. He nails it. 
did not flare out to the three point line but Weeks very explosive score. Carrawell does a nice job faking long and coming back. Williams bounces it in Boozer and a reach in called on Weeks. But that's a good foul again. Boozer has not been able to go ahead and deliver to go on the line to get the traditional three three point play with the basket and a foul. Florida in control of this basketball game so far. Jim, you haven't Absolutely. seen Duke uh, make a move to look like they're the superior team. Duke last led at 13 to 12. Double bonus, Boozer with two. The Florida team that has a 26 and 7 record, but all seven losses were to teams that at one point during the season were ranked. And uh, I've said it uh, a couple of times in this tournament last week at Winston-Salem. A team that probably, you know, in the, in the seeding game deserved maybe a little better than a five. But they had to sort out the whole SEC. Yeah, Four-way tie for first yeah. place. And it was hard to separate one team from the other, particularly when you saw their postseason conference tournament. It was a team, though, Florida, that in the rankings was never lower than 13th in the nation the entire season, including the final poll. Duke ranked number one in the final poll. That was off. That was off the heel of Miller, so it is, in fact, a backcourt violation. It was not touched by James. Good job by James defensively on Miller, who uh, normally can go by another forward. Let's see if Florida stays in the zone. They're in the 2 3 zone. All season, Duke's biggest halftime deficit five. That's not James's spot. Christensen overruns the ball. Florida's got numbers again. Devils came back to win that game at the United Center in Chicago in December. Withstanding a Frank Williams shot at the buzzer that was just off the mark. Final minute, Gators by seven. Well, Jim Duke won four overtime games this year. So, uh, you know, they were they had a lot of Titans. Dupay loves that shot. Three dips in and out. He loves that shot. He's got great range in the shot. Florida goes back, sets up the 2-3 zone. So far, it's been effective. Four-second differential, six straight misses from the floor by the Devils. Mike Krzyzewski would like to go ahead and hold it as long as he can for that last shot. He's got some pretty good perimeter shooters here. Down to 10. They better get moving this ball a little tighter. They're not going to get the shot they want. Five on the shot clock. Carowell looking for a seam. Took too much time. If Dunleavy will have to take it, not in time. But not good execution at all by Duke University there. They're up against the zone. They held the ball. Donovan's going to call a timeout to set up the last second shot. Timeout Gators up seven. Final seconds, first half. She presented her father with his first grandchild last November. Look at trying to, Joey. Trying to go long. Nice Dead side. Haslam. Shot was in time, but it's off the back of the rim. Well, we have to do it. We have to finish. We've had opportunities at the basket, I believe, around 10 times in the first half, and we didn't finish. We had our looks. Florida's playing some good defense when they set their press up. We have to be aggressive and continue to attack it, but we're getting our looks. We just have to finish when we get them. Johnny, thanks. Jim. All right, Billy, what do you believe Duke must do in this half? Well, the first thing they have to do is start protecting the paint better defensively, and I think Williams, with the ball in his hands right now, has got to have much better judgment as to how he gets them in their half-court sets. So far, I think that the tempo of the game is going in Duke's favor as to how they're going ahead and, and, and slowing this game down somewhat, but they cannot finish, as Johnny Dawkins just said. Oh, look at that. Was that Battier? James. Look at Mike Krzyzewski over there, up off of that bench. Battier looks at him, and you can tell, much like was the case for Michigan State last night, where Mateen Cleaves evidently worked over his teammates. Mike Krzyzewski really prodding this team on now. Let's go. Come on, he said. This is really good offensive board work by Duke. I said they couldn't finish, but there's one that goes up by Nate James. Wow, Boozer gets him another chance. Battier, three-point shot, yes! Five right out of the locker room for the Devils. That is some great offensive board work, and Billy Donovan says, no, I've seen enough of this. Let me get my guys refocused. Excellent timeout call on his part. Mike Krzyzewski really hot. There's Boozer, the chest bump to Battier. I guarantee you there was some talk in that locker room. 
Duke did not look good to me in practice yesterday in regard to execution. They started off this first game playing very timid. There's Florida going down with that low post paint job. Rejected by Battier. And Duke down seven at the half. Can tie it with a two, take the lead with a three, the first minute of the second half. Battier wants the ball down in low. Here comes the double team. Good move. Good move right past Miller to tie it. You know what he did there, Jim? Very smart play by Battier. Saw the double team coming from up high, so he spun on the baseline side where there was no help. Billy Donovan coming in with a whole new five. He doesn't like what this starting unit has shown him in the first couple of minutes. He's going to pull them all right out. Wright's got a little man on him inside. They're not delivering him the ball. Hamilton takes the three and buries it right over Carroll. Huge shot by a young man who moved into the starting lineup for the SEC tournament. That was a huge shot for Florida. Got his just fifth start tonight. And Battier travel. Great job by Wright. Battier felt him coming from behind. And here is again the confidence that Billy Donovan has in the rotation of this bench. Picked it up from Rick Patino. You can remember those great Kentucky teams where Patino would go to that bench and they would all produce for him. Second five here, Parker, Nelson with the ball, Harvey, Bonner, and Weeks. Harvey with Boozer down in low. He is very active. Illegal screen by Harvey gets by. Nelson, just as he did at the start of the game, comes right into the action and hits a jumper. How about this? We have had two bizarre swings to start this second half. Duke was down seven at halftime. Came right out, scored seven in the first minute here of the second stanza. But Florida on a five-point run and just forced another turnover. Weeks. As a push inside, Boozer got away with a foul there. Billy Donovan can't believe it. Williams finds a seam and a reach in. Ball on Nelson. That was a big break for Duke there because there was a push by Boozer that would have been his third. Harvey was pushed right underneath the basket. Instead, Duke comes down and gets the touch foul. First on Nelson. Florida sets up the zone out of bounds. Carrillo has to go out high with it. Smart play by Williams, let the ball hit instead of trying to make the catch right at the half court area where it might have gotten away from him. Inside over the back, Harvey. Good feed by Carrollwell, sensing that Boozer had good position. That's three on Harvey, and again, that doesn't hurt Florida as much as three on Boozer would Duke, but uh, still, he's a guy that Billy Donovan wants to have available down the stretch. Haslam back. James, close by his defender, tipped up and in. Batty A, two men down for Duke. Florida Nelson going to try to take advantage. Duke recovers quickly. Illegal screens out front by Florida. They're getting by with it. Boy, Haslam wanted that ball on Boozer and he didn't deliver. He was begging for it. To the corner, Parker bypasses the shot. Bodies everywhere. And Boozer will be whistled for that one. For Boozer, his third. And that's a foul that Duke will have to remember. Mike Krzyzewski will have to get him out of there. But there's no movement yet. And now he makes the move. Dunleavy coming in for it. Dunleavy saw action in the first half, as did Matt Christensen. But Nick Horvath, who has been a contributor all season, freshman from Minnesota for the Devils, did not play. And, and Jim, here is where Dunleavy was so effective for Duke this year. He could come in for multiple positions, but it's not the same player we saw during the regular season where he came in with a freshness. He has not been able to deliver so far in the NCAA tournament. These are going to be important minutes for him. Miller comes back. He's had an off game so far. Miller one of seven from the field. And on made free throws, Florida gets back into their patented press situation. Dunleavy open from the corner. Nothing going for Dunleavy. 
These are critical minutes. He has got to be productive off the bench for Duke. They're getting killed in regard to bench points. In that first half, the Florida bench was 8 for 11, 3 for 5 in, in, uh, in three-point shots, scored 19 of the 40 points. Duke got 0 for 2 from the floor, only two of their 33 points off the bench. Nelson drives. Oh, look at Haslam oh. right over Battier. You know, that was a late whistle, wasn't it? I mean, really, for that much contact. You'll see this. Haslam's going to run from 15 feet, goes over the top, and the, and the whistle wasn't blown immediately. I don't know what they were waiting on. You think he might call that an over-the-back yeah, violation? Yeah, I would think so. That's uh, like textbook. <laughs> There's a hold by Nelson on Williams. This game is getting a little bit rougher right here, which I think favors Florida because they've got a lot of bodies. Good oh. shot. Pull off. Doesn't get the roll. Houston was a tough shot. He was looking to pass first as he left the floor. He's one of nine from the field with a total here tonight of four turnovers. Duke cannot play their best if Williams is not having at least a good game. As him feeds it, Miller's second hoop of the night. Good cut by Miller. Florida getting their second win here now after that quick onslaught by Duke. Nelson on the floor, strips it away. And Williams fights back for it. Tie up situation. Look out. This is getting rough. You can Mike sense Krzyzewski it. Mike Krzyzewski tells his team, stay on the bench area. Johnny Dawkins, 1986. He's coming down that floor, ready to make a play on the break. Well, they call the tie up situation. And a nice piece of officiating here not to call anything other than a tie-up situation. The arrow belongs to Florida. But but again, on this replay, Dunleavy on a weak pass. You throw in the ball cross-court under the other team's basket. Very dangerous. Good hustle here by Williams. And wow, oh, wait, oh, a wait a minute. minute. Wait, Weeks came after him. We did not him. see that. That should have been a... He should have been sitting on that bench for the rest of the game after this play. Never saw it from our angle, but watch what Weeks does right here. Without question, he should be gone. You can't do that. No, he should have been out of this ball game. They have called a non-contact technical foul now on Weeks. Hey, good call. And that's a technical foul. And, and a personal. Jim, from our angle here with all those bodies, we couldn't see the action, nor did we see the official making the move, but I'm glad that they did because without question, this is a technical right here. Watch this action by Weeks. Man alive. That was almost, you could consider that flagrant if you ask me. Matter of fact, he can be thrown out of the game for saying that's a punch. Tell you what, he snapped Williams' head back yep. so, so violently it, it really could have injured the Duke freshman. The action has intensified here in the second half. 16.08 to go. Blue Devils are down six. They were down seven at halftime. Pulled even with Florida in only one minute of play in this second half before the Gators regained control. We've just had a technical foul called on Kenyon Weeks of Florida. And now, because Johnny Dawkins did have the proper angle on that that we did not have, you can see why Dawkins took off down the floor. Battier, the third best free throw shooter in the ACC this year. Johnny Dawkins. Not getting it done here. Johnny Dawkins, the star on the 86 team, the first team that Mike Krzyzewski took to a championship game. Losing to Louisville in that basketball game. Mike said that uh, if he had had more experience, he could have drilled that team to a championship. He won 37 games, which is an all-time NCAA record. Last year's team had a chance to beat it. Carroll well comes back. Now we're going to see the gut check, Jim. Look at Nelson. Where's he going? And that's going to be on Williams. That's his third. Boy, Nelson putting that ball on the floor. No place to go. But he doesn't have to worry about foul trouble. One thing about that technical, it would have been Florida's ball on the arrow, and Duke scores three points at the other end, so could have been like a five-point swing on the week's play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he could take you inside. That's, I guarantee you. <clears throat> Miller, good block help. 
Battier came over and we'll give him another block. Uh, Jim Duke, uh, as we mentioned, here we we'll see that block by Battier again. <clears throat> He's so effective coming from the weak side, getting his hands on the ball. Teddy DePay from downtown. Carowell snags the rebound. I don't think Battier got a piece of that block. Maybe. Might have hit the side of the back. Yeah. Boy, DuPay from that kind of range, and he leans back. That good move by Carowell. Carowell got position. Miller was late getting there. And Miller will be whistled for that one, his second. Jim, four times Duke has ended the regular season under Krzyzewski as the number one team in the country. It's kind of interesting. Not since 1980-81 when DePaul ended in back-to-back -back seasons the number one ranked team. Has anybody done it until Duke did it this year? And in all three of the previous years that Duke ended number one, they worked their way to the final four. But they are in some trouble here tonight. In fact, they in all three of those occasions made it all the way to the championship game when they ended the seat regular season rank number one. Okay, here's a lineup that's worked pretty effectively for Florida. Anytime they go with three bigs, they have uh, given Duke a lot of trouble. Now, particularly with Boozer out of the game. Nice matchup situation by Billy Donovan here. Duke has nothing they can counter with. Carowell brings the Devils within one. He has 14. Now watch how they surround this with Wright and Haslam going inside against Duke. Boy, getting a lot of screens there. There they go, inside. Haslam hooked over Battier. Great coaching move by Billy Donovan. He's got a mismatch inside. And a reach in. They reached in from behind. Wright stole it away, knocked it loose from Dunleavy. Dunleavy just cannot give him anything. Haslam gets Carowell to commit. Wright will drive in, banks it too strong. Back to him. Cheap foul on the inside. Jimmy Dunleavy just does, he just doesn't ha have any movement whatsoever. It just doesn't look like there's any strength at all there on either end of the floor. And he has been an outstanding performer for them as a sixth man, but right now he's hurt. Carowell called for his second. Wright will shoot two. And you see what Mike Krzyzewski's doing right now? He knows at this point in the game, even though Boozer's got three fouls, that the matchup problem that he has that Donovan created for him is going to require him to put Boozer back in the game with 15 minutes to go, and he's got three fouls on him. Duke is a man-to-man -man team, so they can't hide Boozer in the zone. It's a tough situation for a team that's not very deep. In the lane goes Battier. Wright would have had another shot. Yeah, he makes them both, gives him six. He has more points tonight than he had in the two games in the East region in Winston-Salem. Williams, hurry up mode. Finds Boozer. Now that's his roommate. They have good feel for each other on the break. Nelson comes right back at him, though. Almost traveled. No whistle. Double team. Right thought about it. Battier'd be better off laying off a right a little bit. Let him have the shot. Dupe comes no in way. with the big guys, and the ball stripped away from Boozer. Right dips down and out. Boozer has to be careful in there. Carowell, pull up. Yes. And we have a man, Dupe, hurt under the basket. So it was five against four there. We know that uh, Teddy has had a problem with his shoulder. And he was in among the trees on that last play, was never able to come down court, Jim. He will have to come out now. Let's see uh, where Billy Donovan goes. It looks like he got hit in the head here, huh? Tried to drive in there with the big guys. He's a feisty little player, but. Uh, Giving up a lot of size. We'll see him coming right here. Battier gets a piece, and there he got hit right in the head. He lays down here and stayed there as the teams went in the other direction. Dazed, but uh, looks as though he'll be capable of coming back. 14 minutes to go. One point game. Miller back and in. And a whistle on his back, a Duke defender. That's going to be Carowell. Miller is such a versatile offensive player, and Carowell normally great defensively, a guy posts up on him, but Miller's got a couple inches on him and took him to uh, school there. His third, Sunday 60 minutes. And Leslie Stahl with Tom Joyner. You'll get to meet one of America's favorite disc jockeys Sunday on 60 minutes. Oh. Jim, Jim, I think that Mike Krzyzewski 
with this much time left has got to go to Horvath. He's got to go to Christensen. He has got to find somebody that can give him a couple of minutes because his team is getting into some serious foul trouble now. And all year long, he's been able to get by with a six-man club, but not going to happen today. Oh, and Nelson forces another steal. He reached from behind. Miller comes driving through. Battier with a foul. And for Battier, that'll be his second. Duke very careless with the ball when they put the ball on the floor and try to dribble by. Hey, that's on Boozer, Billy, not Battier. That's his fourth. I said that Mike Krzyzewski's going to have to try Horvath or Christensen here. He can't let him foul out with this much time. Horvath kind of peeking down in the direction of the coaches. And I, I'm going to give Billy Donovan tremendous credit here. When he went and put that big lineup in the game, he forced Mike to have to come back with Boozer earlier than he wanted to. He's going to come in with Matt Christensen, not Horvath, on the next whistle. Boozer on the floor with four. And he's not going to take a chance. He picks up another one on a possession. So Mike calls a timeout. Krzyzewski with a timeout. Florida with the three-point lead, under 14 minutes to go. And now here is the key for Duke. Can they steal some minutes from Christensen? They haven't used Horvath at all. Florida goes in a situation where they don't have to worry about Christensen, so Haslam's playing a one-man zone down inside. This could tie it. Way too long. Isn't even close. One for ten from the field. Weeks with a three slides off the rim. Long board to Williams. And here again, you see Duke would like to slow this down a little bit. Come on, come on. Volta up eight in the second half for Miami in the Battle of Hurricanes. Good double, but again, back in. Yeah. Good line with a chance to tie it. You would think that Florida would have learned from the last occasion where Battier saw the double team coming from high, wheeled with a drop step down low on the baseline. Watch this. He sees it coming from the other direction. Terrific job by Battier. You, using the glass, protecting the ball. Watch this drop step. He sees it coming. So instead of going back into the middle, wheels baseline side for the score. Miller with his third. And Duke, seven down at the half, has tied it for the second time in this half. For some reason, though, Jim, they have not been able to put it over the top when they get tight. The Duke that, fans here the, stand down in salute of that comeback. And one of the reasons is the man number 10, Nelson. He, every time Duke gets tight, he seems to be the guy to open things up. Christensen. And Wright gets Battier to commit. And hold on a minute. Traveling called against the Gator. And Duke with two men on the floor. I'm surprised Battier is rushing out at Wright, particularly when he knows he needs to help inside. He hasn't forced Wright to show that he can make some of these shots. Put his team, and James gets over there. A little late, but uh, gets the call. Major Parker in for Florida. They go long. Touchdown pass to Carowell, unable to get to the end zone. Williams had, knows he's got the play. He's having one of the rough night. Patty, a tough shot, and rattles out, but Nate James puts Duke in front. The veteran, now let's see if Nelson can count. First lead for Duke since 13-12. There goes Nelson. Again, see they're charging at right. Nelson for the lead back. No. Battier snares the rebound. Smart play by Williams. What you want to do now is to make Florida play your game. This is what Illinois never was able to do against the Gators. Battier, quick jumper. And Weeks pulls it away. Harrowell looks a little tired here. Parker has some room. Nelson steps in. He'll go back out. Right three-pointer. Long board, Nelson. He ties it at 56. He has been the man on every occasion tonight. Remember when he came in off the bench? Lit everything up. And they missed six in a row before that made basket. Williams seems tired out here. Nelson almost stripped him again. Battier tried to slam home the rebound. And off right. Oh, they missed the short shot by Williams and the slam follow up. Battier may have been too emphatic on that tap.
They're back here in Syracuse. Again, Duke down seven at halftime. Took a two-point lead in this half, but now all squared 56. And it'll be Florida ball. There was a tough pass by Carrollwell trying to throw it cross-court bounce. Tough one to handle. I'm talking about Williams. So far in the last two games, he is one for 11 today with five turnovers. Against Kansas, two for 15 with eight turnovers. That's three for 26. Oh, here Carrollwell this turnover. Hamilton threw it right to him, and Carrollwell comes up short. Williams with the putback. There he is, Billy. That might get him off. Hamilton, tough shot, got oh. it. They just come off with guys, come off that bench, been sitting there, and they come in and make big plays. Nice crossover dribble by Battier. Nate James drives baseline, and they're calling it on James, charge. That was Harvey that got over, he's got three fouls on him. Good play by James, I thought they got there a little late, so did Mike Krzyzewski, he can't believe it. Here's James. Harvey's there. He is waiting on him. Proper call. Bench scoring here in this game, 24 to 2, Florida. Bonner tries to get it into Harvey. Parker. All right, double. He walked. Yep. Duke ball. Came up. Went down. Still had the ball. I tell you, now you need to see Williams bent over. He, he is tired. You're talking about a kid that's had to play some 45-minute games. Oh, no traveling call there. Breaks free, sets up Christensen, who lays it in for the lead. See the difference there, Jim? He stopped at the foul line, came to the jump stop, and made the delivery. Parker bumped by James. And it'll be a one and no, let's see here. Here you see the jump stop, then the delivery. So there's no charge on the play. Christensen does a good job. Making the basket, that's only the second basket of the game for Duke's bench. Back to actually the first basket. Their other two points were Four free points, throws right. by Dunleavy. So uh, Parker will have a one and one here, two to tie. You know, Christensen has been a long uh, time since he saw action in a game like this. 1996 first round loss for the Devils to Earl Boykins in Eastern Michigan, then went on a two-year Mormon mission to Germany, set out another year. So he's just a sophomore, but he has experience in this NCAA tournament all the way back in 96. Well, a good overplay by Duke, by uh, Florida. Duke could not get the ball in bounds. Smart play. Possession is so important for Duke. Duke has two timeouts left. 10 minutes to go, game tied at 60. Well, Jim, here you look at Florida right now with 10 minutes to go. They have five guys on the floor. Only Hamilton was a starter. So they're extremely fresh. And as I said again, cannot get into foul trouble. But Duke has come back bravely from seven down. Christensen for a second basket. No. James inside. Yes. Rebounding against Harvey, who's a tremendous rebounder. Nate James has been solid in every tournament game this year. RV with Christensen down in low. Parker really has become an offensive threat here. There's that rebounding by Carrollwell. Carrollwell and James right now playing bigger than their size. Adier with a screen. Williams navigating. Good recovery by Parker. James had the shot he wanted. Williams pass, Bonner blocked by Harvey, and off Christensen. The work that Nate James does inside for Duke goes unnoticed so often. There was Harvey coming over on Christensen, but look at James crash, great hands. Terrific job on the offensive boards. Eight rebounds for James. Tonight at ties his season high. Okay, here, here you go, Jim. Boozer in, nine minutes to go. He's got four fouls. Mike Krzyzewski stole all the time he could. Good backdoor cut. And Bonner ties it at 62. Boozer was on the bench for not quite five minutes on the game clock. A little under five minutes he's set. Now with under nine minutes to play, and they must bring back the starting center. 
Williams is getting caught with Bonner a lot, and he can't go by him. That should be a matchup in his favor. And now they get the switch back, so Nelson gets on Williams. I bet you Williams tired of seeing fresh bodies out there. There, there he goes, him. Billy. And he gets the hoop to go. Harvey came over to help out, but too late. Good recognition by Williams that time, because he can beat Bonner off the dribble. That was a bad matchup for Florida. Those are illegal Nelson. screens. That yeah, Bonner not whistled for it, though. Another illegal screen by Harvey. Weeks in the lane, gives it up Harvey. Another tie at 64. See, Williams, a little tired right now, can't blow by people to dribble. Look, he's almost walking up the court. Carrollwell got a screen from Boozer, comes up short, Boozer follows it up. Nice play by Boozer to set the screen in Florida. Hey, Carrollwell reaches up and takes it away. Williams, nice. The pass was a little low for Williams, but he handled it and got the hoop. Williams looking at Mike Krzyzewski like, Coach, I gotta have a blow here. They only have two timeouts, Mike trying to save them. Really a battle of wits by these two coaches now. Duke with a four-point lead. Backdoor cut again. Bonner. Battier got caught with a back screen. Doesn't happen to him often. Bonner with two very good plays against one of the nation's top defenders. Williams exhausted and a timeout Duke. Oh, I guarantee you Williams love to hear that. Blue Devils getting some second chances. 24 points, second chance points. In fact, in all, Blue Devil ball up to one timeout remaining. Here we're going to see the back screen right there. Battier doesn't get to it. Bonner two times now in the last uh, three or four possessions have been able to get a back screen or a backdoor cut to beat Battier. Maybe a little mental fatigue as well as physical there, Jim, because Battier usually is able to see the triangle on that ball all the time. Nelson saw it coming, didn't quite get it. Williams has hit three straight from the field. Sensational play over Haslam, who I think was surprised that he took it. Nelson right down to the other end, and Battier knocks it away. Duke has the numbers, but do they have the stamina? Williams outside, oh. and that's a two. They rule it a two. What a comeback by that young man. He Tremendous. Was one for 11 from the field, and now he's hit his last four, including a pull-up jumper for a six-shot lead. Duke's largest of the night. Jim, I said it'd be a gut check, and Williams showing why he is such an outstanding young player. Did not get named as freshman of the year in the ACC. I went to Joseph Forte, but he is playing well now. Here we see that Williams did have his feet on the line, so no question it was a two. But give this young man some credit, Jim. I was saying in the last two games he was three for 26. He has now made four shots in a row. Did Stoop come out in the zone? Do they come out in the zone? They sure do. Does that surprise you? Yes, huh? it does. They're trying a nice move by Mike Krzyzewski. Trying yeah. to save a little energy. That yeah, gets Williams a little, a little bit of a chance, right? Yes. It keeps Boozer potentially out of foul trouble. Nelson didn't recognize the defense, so they're not really ready for it. Seven on the shot clock. Miller. Nelson long range. Wow. Three, and he cuts the lead in half. He has been the man tonight for Florida. 15 for the freshman. Tough pass, and Dunleavy's elbows crash to the floor as his arm was tangled with Nelson's. It'll be a one and one for Dunleavy. And you can see Dunleavy, Dunleavy at, at the six foot eight or nine, goes over the top of Nelson, nice catch. One one, man. No question about the foul. One, one. His father, an All-America at South Carolina, Mike Dunleavy Jr. misses on the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. Pay back in. Remember, he had to sit down with a hit on the head. Steal. Battier was the man who made the play. Behind the back, Dunleavy Williams <laughs> with a little dipsy do, and Duke goes up five. Freshman to freshman. Haslam gets it back quickly, though, that basket. Well, remember, now Boozer cannot afford to play aggressively down in the paint. Mike Krzyzewski showed the zone once. They go over the top. Dunleavy. 
Outside, outside, he traveled. He traveled, put the ball in one hand, he was going to throw the lob. Having a nightmare evening, and here we see Williams behind the back, throws Dupay. Dunleavy goes in, lays it up on the glass. Duke by three. Florida ball, and Coach Billy Donovan talks it over. He's never won in this building, 0 for 2 as a player, but Billy, as you pointed out, actually made two other trips here for Providence. Well, this just goes to show you how a Rick Patino set the life in place for Billy Donovan. He played, in, he was on a team that played four times here, but he didn't even get in the games at Providence as a freshman and sophomore. But as a junior and senior, he became one of their really outstanding players of all time. Florida with a three to tie. Duke has come back from seven down at halftime to take as much as a six-point lead. Dupe looking right. Oh, and he's got a chance to tie it at the line. And more importantly, that's the fifth foul on Boozer. He's out of there. Now Mike krzyzewski has got to go into that bench. And he was trying to keep him on the floor. Another backdoor cut by Florida. They're, they're right now, they don't realize, yes, they realize it now. And that's Boozer's out of there with five minutes to go. 11 points and nine rebounds for Boozer. I really think, Jim, that uh, Duke put Boozer in a bad situation there, and I don't mean the coaching staff, I'm talking about his teammates. These backdoor cuts that have been made are because they've been playing too aggressively out on top and not helping him to protect down on the, in the paint. Dunleavy comes into the game. How important it is for him and Duke for him to do something for this team. Florida, great comeback here. They've come back from six down. We have essentially an overtime situation. Five minutes to go, tied at 74. Duke has been in five overtimes this year. Of course, Florida could have won the SEC outright if it wasn't for the two overtimes they had to play against Tennessee. Good pump thing. Batty A drives and gives Duke the lead back. Florida had to win its first round game in overtime. Coming back from seven down with four minutes to go in regulation to knock out Butler, which put on quite a performance. Miller wants to challenge Dunleavy. And that kicks out for right. Dunleavy with a big rebound. He looks up the sky and just has no expression or color in his face at all. You really feel sorry for the young man because he's going to be an outstanding player. But doesn't look like he has a lot of energy. Florida in his zone. Three weeks ago, Dunleavy was out with mononucleosis for four games. Inside, Battier, good hands. And a foul on Florida. That almost got away from the Devils. Tough pass, but the solid hands kept it. With what? the Devils. Battier on an excellent pump fake drive to the baseline because you've got to protect him with that three. He's such an outstanding three point shooter, but he puts the pump fake on, does a nice job not to charge. Miller can't stop him. That was the fourth on Miller. So two shots for Battier. Miller has not had the big game. Uh, as a key player for Florida, but they really have picked up with outstanding play from Nelson and the entire bench. Four minutes to go, four point lead. Battier with 20 tonight, 15 coming in the second half. Watch these hot side, these high screens here for Nelson. Nelson needs help. Miller to the rescue. Dupay with the left hand, it spins out. Haslam so strong. Big rebound, way too strong. Right put the follow, thrown out of there by Battier. And how about the long arms of Dudley to be able to pull that one back in. Battier time and time again with sensational plays. There is not a better all-around player in the country than Shane Battier. And Florida stays in the zone. Williams going to try a long three. Miller pulls down the rebound. The numbers. The numbers. Right broke with Dupe, who stutter steps. Nelson goes inside. Dupe, three, down the one. Great play by Miller on the kick out. Gave it to a teammate, went better shot, and oh, Duke oh, throws almost. it away. And it is Florida ball. 
It's Dunleavy, James, Carowell, Battier, and Williams on the floor. Four starters plus Dunleavy. And you've got that combination of Haslam and Wright, which have been so, so tough. Dupe, Miller, Haslam, Wright, and Nelson. A basket for the lead. The freshman comes up short. Carowell with the rebound. Well, Florida got a pretty good look at that basket by a guy that's been carrying him tonight in all the big situations. Florida stays in the 2-3 zone. Figuring maybe there's some tired legs from Duke out there. They're not going to get the elevation on the jump shot. And with Boozer out of there, Duke has no inside game. Battier trying to take his place. Under 10 on the shot clock. Williams, three. There's the case of the oh. tired legs, and he probably shouldn't have saved that. Because now he's out of the mix. Exactly. Five out of five on four inside, and Florida takes the lead. And Williams would have been a lot better keeping that ball to himself. Tired legs, Jim, make for bad jump shots. Two minutes to go. The number one seed in the East is down one. Dunleavy for the lead back, and it's going against the freshman. Charge. This is a brilliant move by Billy Donovan. He knows that Duke is tired. He goes to the 2-3 zone, knowing they have no inside game with Boozer gone. There's Dunleavy making a play with nobody under the basket. Duke stays in there man to man. What a chess match we've had between these two outstanding coaches tonight. One forty remaining. Gators looking to add to the lead to pay. The three, three rattles out. Almost a four-point opportunity. Williams will send them to the line, though, for three free throws. No need for that foul. Dupay had the look. You've got to let him take it. And now Billy Dunley going to stay in that zone. Duke is going to have to get some offensive rebounds, but where do they come from other than smaller men like James and Carowell? That's the fourth on Williams. Three at the line for Dupe. Whoa. The number one ranked team in the country in the final poll going into the tournament is down one. Florida in its school history has seven times faced a number one ranked team, has never come within 10 points of that number one team. 0 and 7. And Duke riding on 26 straight Eastern Regional wins. Duke came back against Kansas. Down one. A little less than a minute to go. Now they're down two to Bay only able to make one of three. But they stay in the 2-3 zone. See if Duke puts a man on the foul line to try to get some inside game going. That is to James for the lead back. See, there's no rebounding inside with Boozer no longer there. They've got a one and done situation. The zone again, a very good move by Florida. 1-12 to go. Florida in no hurry with the two-point lead. Three good ball handlers, easy pass. Haslam underneath, and he's unable to sneak it in from underneath the cylinder, but he'll head to the line for a pair. Well, here you go back, Jim. Mike Krzyzewski not able to steal enough minutes to keep Boozer on the floor with Christensen or Horvath, who never got into the game at all for Duke. So the bench and the foul problems created by not having one has really hurt Duke. Two for Haslam. Boozer has fouled out. Williams has four. Three fouls at this point on James. Three on Carowell. Parker comes back, and Florida could have really had a little space here, a little more comfort, but made now only one of the last four, but the Haslam miss and Dupay's one of three. Parker coming back in to give him a little more size on the, out on the perimeter in that zone. Still a one possession game here, and Florida picks up full court. See, they've got now, without Dupay out on the front, be tough to shoot over it on the perimeter. Under one minute to go, needing a three at a time. Battier can do it. And Miller, the man underneath for the Gators. No rebounding. Carowell down, slow getting up. He looks up at the clock in desperation here. Duke's had chances his last two trips and a reach around foul. His fourth, Carowell. Miller will shoot two, a double bonus. 
With 37 seconds to go, the number one seed in the East, the number one ranked team in the nation. The Duke Blue Devils are down three, and the Gators are at the line shooting two. They have come back from six down in this half after relinquishing a seven-point halftime lead. A 12-4 run for Florida. Mike Miller will shoot one more. Two-possession game now, Billy. Now you've got the two-possession game. Duke will have to put it on the floor. Jason Williams probably penetrating to the basket as quickly as he can. But a made free throw here allows Florida to set up their press. Got them both. They drop back into the 2-3 zone again. Williams should try to penetrate right inside here. With the dribble, he doesn't have time to do anything else. It's Battier who goes back out with it. This could cut it to two. Williams, no, and three straight long-range shots and misses and rebounds by Florida. 25.5 seconds to go and 30,000 plus here in Syracuse sense that the third number one seed of this tournament is about to be ousted. Only Michigan State knows for sure that they are going to advance for another day. Arizona and Stanford eliminated in the second round. And Duke here in the round of Sweet 16 down five and it could be even more here in a moment. Two for Miller. Six point lead. Miller did not have the big game offensively, but he's coming through now, particularly in that 2-3 zone that Billy Donovan so wisely uh, put in play here and getting some good defensive rebounds. Timeout, Florida, with a seven-point lead. Now Florida drops all the way back. They're not going to let any roll in ball. Jason Williams has got to go directly to the basket here. Parallel three-point shot. Underneath, Florida hands Aslam with the strong rebound, and a reach-in foul will send right to the line as Williams will foul out with that one. No place for Duke to go off that bench tonight. Two young teams whose programs will be major factors in college basketball for years to come, but tonight the younger team with the deeper bench. And we're taking about, control. We're about to see the end of the career for Chris Carrollwell, one of Mike Krzyzewski's favorite players, senior ACC player of the year from St. Louis, Missouri. Williams out. There he is. He had taken two steps forward his first three years and virtually everything he did for Duke. Second round loss his freshman year to Providence. Two rounds later, his sophomore year, Kentucky beat him in the Elite Eight. Two more steps forward last year, all the way to the final, a loss to UConn. Well, think about it, Jim. Only Grant Hill has scored 1,000 points at 500 rebounds, 100 blocks, and 275 assists. So a young man who did not come in with all that fanfare to play his last game for Duke, Chris Carrollwell. Carrollwell. And Florida ball with eight seconds to go. His head down, realizing gravity of the moment. It's about to end for him at Duke, and the number one seed in the East Mike is going out. Mike will take him out of the game now to what should be a standing ovation. And, and he's encouraging everyone there to recognize this young man's achievements in four years. Great relationship there, coach and player. And that's what it is about right there, that scene in college basketball. Mike goes down to congratulate Billy Donovan. And the Florida Gators, the Florida Gators are eliminators of the number one seed in the East.